Welcome to part 5 of our How to Read Music session. This is going to be introducing a, another very important concept. Of course, with music they're all important because they all build upon one another. But this is the idea of half steps and whole steps. So we talked about in the last video, intervals, about the space between two notes. And all of the ones we talked about, the major, we talked about seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, the space from one note to another note, counting up the staff or down the staff. Um, that space is kind of the generic idea of the space between two notes. More specific, we get in the idea of whole steps and half steps. Okay, a whole step is the space between two notes, like we were talking about it in the intervals. But let's work at it kind of from the other side of the loaf of bread. The half step is the smallest interval used in, in Western music, as it says on the screen. And of course, once again, Yay, make music in finale for providing us with some cool visuals that we can use. Okay, the piano keyboard is a good way to, to think about this. The half step is the space from one note on a piano keyboard to the next key. Doesn't matter what it is. So if you start here on this white key, from this white key to this black key, from one spot to the very next key is a half step. It's the smallest space in Western music and in music notation that we use. So we have half step, then go from black to white, half step, then go from white to black, half step, then go from black to white, half step. Now this is a little tricky. From white to white, but there's no key in between. So is that a half step or a whole step? That's right. It's a half step because once again, a half step is going from one key to the other key. Doesn't matter whether it's white to white or white to black, or black to white. A half step is going from one key to the very next key without skipping anything. Now forget staff for the moment because we're going to talk about that later on in this video, how that looks on a staff. But right now let's just visualize it in terms of the keyboard. Okay? A whole step is two half steps put together. So if we started here again, we know from going from this white key to this black, or I guess technically green on my screen, key is a half step and going from this green slash black key to this white one is also a half step which means going from this white key to this white key is a whole step because we have two half steps one half step two half steps so we went white to black black to white that gives us two half steps make a whole two halves make a whole in math and pretty much everywhere else so two half steps make a whole step. Now what do we do if we start here? If we start where the mouse pointer is right now. Well we go from white key to white key but without a black in between so is that a half step or a whole step that I just did? Hopefully you get, got it right and that's a half step so we have to go from half step to second half step so to get a whole step starting here on the E we have to go all the way up to this black key or green right here because one half step and another half step equals a whole step. So let's scroll down a little ways. What do we think? Half step or whole step right here? What about here? What about here? This is the example I did a moment ago. And then, and then, all right, well, let's go through them. White key to black key is a half step because we didn't skip anything. White key to black key to white key because we had to go through an extra half step Half step, half step is now a whole step. Okay, white key, there's a half step, there's another half step, which makes it a whole step. What about here? No key in between, nothing is skipped, so half step. Did we skip something here? That's right, we skipped D key. So we have half step, half step, which makes a whole step. What about here? Are we skipping any key? Of course we are, so it's also a whole step. 
So let's keep this going then, and look at the second round of it. What if we spread it out a little bit farther? How many half steps are here? How many half steps? Go ahead and take a second and count them out. Four half steps, right? Half step one, half step two, half step three, half step four. How many whole steps would that be? Well, if you know your fractions, of course, if we divide it by two, because two half steps go into a whole step, we know it's two whole steps. How many whole steps in this one? Well, we have one whole step, two whole steps, three whole steps, but then we have to make it go the rest of the way, one half step. What about here? How many half steps in number three? Take a moment and count. Let's go through it together. Half step, a half step, half step, half step, half step, half step, half step. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many? half steps, no, sorry, how many whole steps here? I'll give you time to count. It's important to be able to start thinking about these in terms of half steps and whole steps, not just figuring the half steps and then dividing. Although that will get you there and help you out for the beginning stages. So let's just do this one in whole steps to start with, and then we can figure it from there. One whole step, two whole steps, three whole steps, four whole steps, five whole steps, six whole steps to get to those two notes. Why don't you just see if you can pause the video right here and figure out the rest of them on your own. Five, six, seven, and eight. Figure out how many whole steps or half steps or a combination thereof are in between each of the circled notes. Hopefully you paused it and took care of that. So the idea of half steps and whole steps, the half step is the smallest space in between two notes. And when we're looking at a keyboard, that's without skipping anything. So going immediately to the next note up. A whole step is two half steps combined. And then you can get to two, three, four whole steps and farther along. So when marking these on the staff, it's a bit more complicated. Because, as we know, our staff only has letters, letters assigned to the lines and spaces. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G or G, F, E, D, C, B, A, depending on which direction you're going. Up for forwards in the alphabet, down for backwards in the alphabet. Or if you want to think about it in terms of lines and spaces, if a good boy does fine, face for the treble clef, and good boys do fine always, and all cows eat grass always for the bass clef. So, when we're marking these notes, each one of these notes that's a half step in between the letter names has two names. I like to think about this when I explain this to people who, who are new to music, and they say, well, how can that one key have the same name? Well, how do you have the same name? You're one person, and yet you can have two different names. To my students, I'm Mr. Dennis. To my family, I am not Mr. Dennis, even though I'm the same person. My family calls me John. So both of those names, John and Dennis, belong to me in the same way, C-sharp, and D flat both have the same button that you push them down on the keyboard. 
Now, this is can be a bit tricky, but sharps raise the notes higher. So they always have to they always take the name from the note below them. So when you're looking at the sharps over on the left hand side of the screen, and you see that we have C sharp there. Okay? When we're naming a sharp, we always go to the letter name that was it always takes the letter name that was below it because a sharp takes this C and raises it a half step. So a sharp makes the sound go higher. So you go from C up to C sharp. When we're thinking about names, flats lower it a half step. And it's important we know that these what these do because later on in the game we'll have times where it influences things. But for the purposes of right now, it's important to just remember that when we're thinking flats, the flats lower the sound a half step. So if we were right here on this D key, the white key, and we want to go to D flat, we go lower a half step. Now, you may have already noticed from earlier on in the video that there's a couple of keys where there isn't a black key in between. What would those letters be if you're looking at the screen right now? What are two of those letters that don't have a black key in between? Some of you may have said E and F. Some of you may have come up with B and C. Both of those are correct. So let's just kind of put this into a little bit of a, a mind twister moment here for a second. Let's look at this E. Okay. If I were to add a sharp to that E, what does a sharp do? That's right. It raises it a half step. So if I'm raising a half step, what's a half step higher than E? Well, it can't be right here because it doesn't exist. So you have to go straight over to F. It's not something you see very often, but technically an E sharp is an F. It is another way for writing the same note. Another name, first name versus last name, for the same thing. Same can be true of C flat. A flat lowers the note a half step. So we start on C and we go down a half step, and a C flat would be pushing down the same key as a B. So sharps go up a half step, flats go down a half step. Very important to learn. Very, very important to learn. So Really quick, let's just kind of look, and I'm not going to ask you obviously to, to draw the sign in front of whatever. I, I just want to use this real quick to point a couple of notes out, and then we're going to move on to putting it into actual practice. Okay, E flat. So is that going to lower the note sounding wise, or is that going to raise the note sounding wise? Right, the flat's going to lower it. What about the C sharp? Is that going to make the note closer to D or closer to B underneath? Is it closer to the note above or closer to the note below? That's right, it goes to the note above. So, with that in mind, let's do a little bit of practice. Okay, so, in our treble clef, what note is this right here? That's right, C. Now, if we want to make this note higher, we add a sharp to it. The sharp always goes in front of the note. Because as you're reading it left to right, you need to know before you play it which button to push, or which string to finger, or which note to sing. So when writing these, we call them accidentals. I wish I could tell you the historical reason why, but I don't actually know. But we call these accidentals, and when we write an accidental, a sharp or a flat, it's always in front of the note. Now, if I were going to put that same note, that same letter note, in the bass clef, where would I need to put it? Here? Maybe right here. Maybe all the way down here. You tell me. Now, to successfully read music, there's not a shortcut to that aspect of it you have to be able to tell the lines and the spaces and what letter names go with them for the clef you want to read. You may say to yourself, well I only want to read treble clef. It's the only thing, my instrument just is in treble clef. 
And it's fine. I'd encourage you to read Base Cliff. We will continue to do things in both, but it's fine. For Treble Clef, you have to have memorized your notes, lines, and spaces wise. So, C in the bass clef is there. Now, these two notes aren't actually the same right now, are they? Because this one is a half step higher than this one. If you play them together, they won't sound very good. They'll clash. So we've got to make this note the same by adding a sharp to it, which raises the pitch. Boom. Now if I play them, they sound much better. Let's see, what about a flat? Let's do that. What letter name is that? Well, if you remember your spaces, F-A-C-E is E. Where would I put it in the bass clef? Boom. And I have to add a flat in front of it to make it sound the same. So flats and sharps move the notes around. And what they do is they allow us to do some really cool stuff. They allow us to, to have the building blocks of all the music that we know. So let's do a couple of more reviews, and then I'll show you how to, we put together a major scale based on this, which will give you kind of a preview of where the next video is going. So let's pick one with the bass clef starting off first. How about right here? That's a good note. That's, that's the A in the bass clef. And it's good because it can go both ways. It can go sharp and flat. So let's see. Let's do another flat. So we've lowered it. Hopefully you can hear that. Listen just once. Can you hear how the flat is lower? Now where would we put that same note in the treble clef? Here? Or here? Or there? Maybe all the way up here. I'll help you out, and we'll lower it to the same place. Let's see, what about an F sharp? Boom. F in the bass clef. Now listen to it go up. Let me play that again for you. Can you hear it actually increase, or rather go higher? Dum, dum. It goes up. So the sharp makes it go up. Now. Let's see, let's say that I want the F in the treble clef that's on a line. Because there's two Fs in the staff on the treble clef. So I want the one, I want you to pick the one that's on a line. Which line is it? The middle line? Or maybe it's the second line? Maybe it's the fourth line? But all of those are not true. It's the fifth line. And we have to raise it a half step with our sharp. Boom. Now, these notes are going to sound you know, essentially like notes. And this isn't going to sound, because this is not any kind of piece of music. This is just notes that I wrote. It's not going to sound necessarily amazing together. But let's just listen to it once. Okay, now it also sounds a little different, because up here, it went down. But in the bass clef, we went up. That's a part writing thing that we're going to talk about in a much later video. That's depending on who you ask, very bad. But not everybody would agree. So we had these half steps and whole steps, and we use them to create essentially the building blocks of Western music. So let's get rid of that. And let's talk about very briefly about a scale. Now, there are several different kinds of scales, but the most famous and the most influential scale in terms of developmental music theory is the major scale. So the major scale exists on a pattern. All scales do, but the pattern for the major scale is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Or, as a lot of musicians tend to think because they don't say step after it, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So, let's think about that in our staff right here. So if we're going to do a scale in our staff, let's start on C, just for the sake of argument, C, then a whole step above C is going to be D. So we have whole step first, then another whole step, D to E. Boom. Now E to F is our special case. It's one of our half steps 
that there isn't a key in between. So just as a quick refresher, let me pull that up. Okay. E to F is one of our combination ones that does not have a black key in between. So we have whole step, C to D, whole step, D to E, half step, E to F, then F to G is another whole step, G to A is another whole step, A to B is another whole step. So now here are those were our three whole steps. And then B to C is a half step. Now most of you have probably heard this before, especially if you've ever seen the sound of music. And you may recognize it as do, la, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Those are its solfege syllables, which is something else entirely to help you sight sing. And something that we will be talking about, but not for a little while in terms of any depth. Um, so if you're curious where this sort of thing comes from, when you hear that in Sound of Music, there you go. That's a major scale. Now let's do it in the bass clef. Let's do a different scale so we can get some sharps and flats in there. Let's say we need, how about a simple one? How about an F scale? So, F, first note, it's one space below the staff on the bass clef. And then F to E, sorry, F to G, I don't know why I spaced on that, it's a whole step. G to A is a whole step. But now we have to have a half step because our pattern for major scales is whole, whole half. So the third one, third space in between, whole step space in between, whole step space in between, has to be a half step. So we have to add a flat to make this a half step. So we have whole step space, whole step space, half step space. Now this has the advantage of simplifying something for us because now that we've lowered this a half step, the space between B and C, the space between B flat and C is now a whole step where it used to be B and C is a half. So we have whole whole, half, whole, then what comes next? Another whole step, another whole step, and then finally a half step, E to F. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. There you go. So that's the introduction to scales, which is what we'll be talking about in the next video in a fair amount of depth.